Ladies and gentlemen, today we will be going over all of the random roles for the Brave Arsenal weapons that will be making a return in D2 Come Into the Light, which releases April 9th, 2024. Yesterday, Bungie did part two of their developer live stream and gave us a glimpse of these weapons. If you guys want to check out a video that I made given all the details, I will put it in an annotation at the top right of the screen right now and at the end of this video. Now, all the information in this video is coming from the blog that Bungie had released earlier today and we'll be going over it. However, if you wish to read the blog yourself, then I will put it in the link in the description box below. But before we continue on with the video, this video is brought to you by Hyper Controllers. They are the first company to ever put Hall Effect thumbsticks inside a PS5 controller, which means no stick drift. You can customize your own controller or shop for a pre-made one. You can customize a controller for PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC with custom shells, extra paddles or buttons with a remappable chip, Hall Effect sensors, mouse click bumpers and triggers, and much more. Hyper Controllers offers a one year warranty on all of their controllers. You can check them out by going to hypercontrollers.com and you can use promo code RXRP to save 5% off your order. Okay, so as I stated, I will be reading everything off of the blog and you guys can follow along if you want. So, Dev Insight Brave Arsenal. And this is coming from the Destiny 2 dev team. We hope you enjoyed yesterday's live stream focused on Destiny 2 Into the Light, where we revealed the Brave Arsenal, a collection of some of the most iconic weapons in Destiny's history. Today, we will expand on how we are bringing back these living legends to the current sandbox, along with their limited edition variants. Without further ado, we leave you in the very capable hands of our weapons team. Good day, folks. Chris Proctor and the weapons team here with the details on the Destiny 2 Into the Light weapon set. In Destiny 2 Into the Light, we wanted to ship new versions of as many of the most iconic weapons from all over Destiny's history as we could, including a couple of original Destiny throwbacks with updated art as well as rebuilt or brand new perks. Many of the original versions can no longer be acquired, while others can only be obtained from end game activities. We've pulled these weapons from many sources, including raids, pinnacle weapons, black armory, and one epic meme. Then we carefully weight impact of rebuilding certain weapons against others before deciding on these to represent different eras of the game and a variety of weapon archetypes. The selection we ended up with is 12 iconic weapons remembered with a smile by many players. Many of these have random roles for the very first time, while others have updated perk pools. Our goal was to make them feel like they used to, and many retain their original stat packages, but others have been updated to achieve that feel in the current weapon sandbox. But let us be clear, only the Destiny 2 Into the Light versions of these weapons have updated perk pools, even compared to the weapons that are currently obtainable in the game. Each weapon comes with a brand new origin trait, Indomitability, and many of them can roll with a new right column trait, Desperate Measures. We also made sure all of these brave arsenal weapons were updated to our current art quality bar, and they have a consistent visual theme across the whole set. Here are the 12 weapons that we brought back. So the first one they mentioned is Forbearance. Now real quick, just so you know ahead of time, in order to get these weapons, you need to have the corresponding DLC that it came with. So for example, Forbearance came in the Witch Queen. You need to have the Witch Queen in order to get this Forbearance for the Brave Arsenal. Now, this Wayfave Grenade Launcher has been a staple in PvE since it shipped, with the potent combination of Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction. It was only the second special ammo weapon to include this strong ad clear perk. This is from the Valor Disciple raid, so normally it requires ownership of the Witch Queen and an active raid group to get it. But we want all players to experience this so strong it could be an exotic weapon and get a taste of endgame artillery. We also took this opportunity to update its perk pool to include Disruption Break, Demolitionist, and more. In the third column, you'll be able to get Unrelenting, Stats for All, Demolitionist, Ambitious Assassin, Surplus, Steady Hands, and Disruption Break. And in the fourth column, we'll be able to get Wellspring, Golden Tricorn, One for All, Bait and Switch, Chain Reaction, Rampage, and Desperate Measures. 
Now, the next weapon is Succession, and you need to have Beyond Light in order to actually get this one. With this combination of Reconstruction and Vorpal Weapon, this sniper rifle doesn't have to be manually reloaded, hits very hard, and sees a lot of usage in long range raid and nightfall encounters. It lures players into the Deep Stone Crypt raid when Beyond Light launched, and again when the weapon set was reprised more recently. As with Forbearance, while acquiring this from the Deep Stone Crypt raid requires ownership of Beyond Light, this version is available to all players. In the third column, you'll be able to get Moving Target, No Distractions, Lead from Gold, Reconstruction, Firmly Planted, Demolitionist, and Discord. And in the fourth column, you'll be able to get Snapshot Sights, Redirection, Recombination, Vorpal Weapon, Focus Fury, Fire in Line, and Box Breathing. So, for Fallen Guillotine, you need to have Shadow Keep. Fallen Guillotine, the first legendary Vortex frame sword, Fallen Guillotine is descended from the Dark Drinker sword from the original Destiny. It immediately jumped to the top of the sword meta when it shipped and is still relevant now, making it one of the most persistently popular legendary weapons in Destiny 2. Now, Fallen Guillotine is back with an updated perk pool and some spicy combos, including Repulsal Brace with Destabilizing Rounds and Chain Reaction Surrounded. And longtime favorite, Relentless Strikes with Whirlwind Blade. In the third column, you can get Vorpal Weapon, Relentless Strikes, Repulsa Brace, Frenzy, Attrition Orbs, Chain Reaction, and Duelist Trance. And in the fourth column, you'll be able to get Surrounded, Whirlwind Blade, Destabilizing Rounds, Eager Edge, Bait and Switch, Sword Logic, and Desperate Measures. For the next set of weapons, Recluse, Mountaintop, Hammerhead, Blast Furnace, Edge Transit, and Luna's Howl, you will need to have the Forsaken DLC. So, for the Recluse, this weapon shipped as a Pinnacle Crucible reward instantly became mandatory in PvE and ruling PvP with an Iron Fist. Now it's back with random rolls, including the iconic Master of Arms perk, which kills with any weapon improve this weapon's damage for a short time. We've tweaked this perk to be more balanced than the previous versions, but the Recluse remains an extremely potent option in PvP and PvE. So, when this comes out in the third column, you'll be able to get Freeding Frenzy, Enlightened Action, Subsistence, Threat Detector, Repulsor Brace, Hip Fire Grip, and Dynamic Sway Reduction. In the fourth column, you'll be able to get Master of Arms, Target Lock, which I don't see the point, Frenzy, Destabilizing Rounds, Surrounded, Tap the Trigger, and Desperate Measures. So next, let's go over Mountaintop. Another pinnacle PvP weapon that was the backbone of raid teams for more than a year. The Mountaintop has massive damage output in PvE and PvP. We've turned this micro missile perk into a new breach grenade launcher intrinsic perk so it retains that functionality but has two traits on top of that we didn't want a return to the days of the mountaintop pvp meta so we opt to rebuild micro missile it retains its pve strength but with decreased self damage and a massively increased physics impulse hilarity ensues in the third column, you'll be able to get Ambitious Assassin, Impulse Amplifier, Demolitionist, Lead from Gold, Slick Draw, Auto Loading Holster, and Overflow. And in the fourth column, you'll be able to get Rampage, Vorpal Weapon, Adrenaline Junkie, One for All, Harmony, Recombination, and Frenzy. The next weapon is Hammerhead. The first legendary machine gun introduced into Destiny 2 is overdue for a return. Hammerhead is still considered one of the best of its kind, and it's coming back with top tier perks and that iconic black armory style. The new perk combinations of Rampage plus Killing Tally and Rampage plus Desperate Measures are particularly spicy in PvE. In the third column, you'll be able to get Feeding Frenzy, Destabilizing Rounds, Envious Assassin, Rampage, Four Times the Charm, Rewind Rounds, and Under Over. And in the fourth column, we'll be able to get high impact reserves, target lock, 
Onslaught, Killing Tally, Desperate Measures, and Tap the Trigger. Next weapon is Blast Furnace. Now, it is not the first, but certainly the most beloved aggressive burst, aka four burst, pulse rifle. Blast Furnace now comes equipped with the Rasmussen ISA scope by default, which is the scope that everyone loved the most on it, and rolls barrels instead of scopes in that first column. It was a powerhouse when it arrived and is once again with the advantage of some top tier new perks, including the potent combination of Kinetic Tremors and Firefly for PVE and Zen Moment and Rapid Hit for a perfectly stable PVP role. In the third column, we'll be able to get Zen Moment, Snapshot, Shoot to Loot, Keep Away, Perpetual Motion, Kinetic Tremors, and Head Seeker. And in the fourth column, we'll be able to get Kill Clip, Firefly, One for All, Frenzy, Rampage, Rapid Hit, and Desperate Measures. The next weapon is Edge Transit. This heavy grenade launcher is a longtime fan favorite and the most often requested weapon to reprise in this list by far. Okay, not really. But the ridiculous drop rate in early Forsaken was such a persistent meme that we couldn't resist including it and turning it into one of the strongest grenade launchers in the entire game. With the greatest hits of grenade launcher damage perks and one particularly spicy option of cascade point in the third column. With Chain Reaction getting buffed on drum grenade launchers in the final shape, the Chain Reaction Destabilizing Rounds combo provides some of the most potent ad clear in the game. And Cascade Point with Bait and Switch is particularly synergistic for single target damage. This weapon is also why we pulled the Heavy Grenade Launcher buff from the final shape into the 7.3.5 update. So in the third column, you'll be able to get Chain Reaction, Cascade Point, Impulse Amplifier, Field Prep, Auto Loading Holster, Envious Assassin, and Repulsor Brace. In the fourth column, You'll be able to get Frenzy, Destabilizing Rounds, Deconstruct, Adrenaline Junkie, Bait and Switch, Full Court, and Explosive Light. The next and final weapon for Forsaken is the Luna's Howl. Of all the weapon types we wanted to include, selecting a limited number of hand cannons was by far the hardest. We probably could have filled the entire list with often requested hand cannons. We have not forgotten them, pun intended. But there are a couple that stand out both for nostalgia and dominance one of which is the Luna's Howl. Originally, this was a precision frame 180 RPM hand cannon, and a magnificent howl perk would let you two tap on follow-up kills in PvP, driving massive amounts of players to engage with competitive PvP when it launched as a pinnacle weapon. The blisteringly fast time to kill was a bit over the top for the amount of effort the weapon required, so we reduced the rate of fire and redesigned the perk to have a higher reward for more effort than the original. For this iteration, we've kept it a precision frame, 140 RPM hand cannon, and redesigned the Magnificent Howl perk. And the number of precision final blows before reloading affects the total rounds granted with increased range and damage. Precision final blows with Magnificent Howl active extend the effect for additional rounds. This will allow those two taps, but with more effort required and the precision frame will still make it very easy to control. So in the third column, we will be able to get Isla Storm, Subsistence, Discord, Encore, Slide Shot, Enlighten Action, and Heal Clip. And in the fourth column, we'll be able to get Magnificent Howl, Kill Clip, Incandescent, Desperate Measures, Opening Shot, Precision Instrument, and Harmony. Note, it didn't make sense to ship Not Forgotten in this release, but we're on the lookout for a good opportunity to bring it back too. The next weapon is the Midnight Coup, and this was released in Destiny 2 Year 1. This hand cannon dominated PvP and PvP in Year 1, mostly because raid weapons were the only ones with two trait columns back then, plus it had amazing stats. These have fallen behind a little bit, so we've updated them at the same time we have given it a brand new perk pool. It still includes the original combo of Outlaw and Rampage, but keep an eye out for Firefly and Kinetic Tremors for PvE and Moving Target and Zen Moment for a PvP consistency role. In the third column, 
We have Outlaw, Firefly, Shoot to Loot, Explosive Payload, Moving Target, Attrition Orbs, and Enlightened Action. And in the fourth column, which would be right here, we have Rampage, Kinetic Tremors, Zen Moment, One for All, Frenzy, Open and Shot, and Desperate Measures. The next weapon is the Hung Jury SR4, and it requires you to have the Taken King. Hung Jury SR4 was at one time one of the most requested weapons to bring forward from the original Destiny, and we did in Destiny 2's Season of the Splicer, but it was only right to include it again here, given its legacy. So, in the third column, we'll be able to get Rewind Rounds, Enlighten Action, Kinetic Tremors, Rapid Hit, Shoot to Loot, No Distractions, and Loose Change. And in the fourth column, we'll be able to get One for All, Cascade Point, Box Breathing, Firefly, Precision Instrument, Desperate Measures, and Explosive Payload. And last but not least, we have the Elsie's Rifle. And this was obtained in the original Destiny. As you can tell from the screen, in Destiny 2 is no time to explain. So, known as the Stranger's Rifle, when it originally shipped, this pulse rifle is familiar to any Guardian who played through the original Destiny campaign, and it's the oldest weapon on the list. Now it returns as a void weapon with top tier PVE and PVP perks. Pretend this is a legendary called Elsie's Rifle, okay? This is actually what the rifle, like the shape looks like and everything. In the third column, we'll be able to get Feeding Frenzy, Zen Moment, Repulsive Raise, Loose Change, Keep Away, Under Over, and Rewind Rounds. And in the fourth column, we'll be able to get Adrenaline Junkie, Frenzy, Destabilizing Rounds, Kill Clip, Desperado, Desperate Measures, and Head Seeker. And that's all of them. Half of these will be available starting April 9th, including the Recluse, Hung Jury SR4, Succession, Edge Transit, LC's Rifle, and Fallen Guillotine. The remainder will unlock one at a time each week through the week of May 21. The Brave Arsenal weapons will continue to drop from Onslaught after the final shape, but the limited edition variants won't be available after June 3rd, so go get them while you can. We hope you are as hype as we are about Onslaught and the Brave Arsenal and that you found all the information we shared today useful and there's still more to share. Our third and final live stream focused on Destiny 2 Into the Light will air April 2nd. That's actually one week before the content update arrives on April 9th. We can't wait. Until then, Guardians. So, I did notice that a lot of weapons actually had some of the perks removed from their original versions and obviously updated with some other ones. However, me personally, not complaining, but I am complaining at the same time. I would have preferred Not Forgotten over Luna's Howl because I love the way Not Forgotten feels more than Luna's Howl does. That's just me. Either way, there's a lot of good updates that's coming to Destiny 2, especially with the Brave Arsenal weapons, and I personally am excited. I apologize if my reading kind of like uh, killed you and was a little bit boring. Um, I hate reading, but hey, I did it for you guys. So with that said, let me know if all of this information helped you guys out and which weapon that you are most excited for when the Brave Arsenal is actually released. As you guys know, I will be going for Luna's Howl because Not Forgotten's not here, so yeah. <laughs> and that, my friends, brings us to the end. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe to my channel, like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey, hey you, watch these videos too. I know you like them. Go, 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 go.